What is up, everybody? Jamie Shaw here with the Absolute Basketball Experience. On today's episode, we catch up with Sunrise Christian senior Dylan Jones. We talk about his recruitment. We talk about the food differential between Kansas and South Carolina, and we talk about his recruitment. Before we get into it, though, I ask that you please subscribe to the channel and then click the bell so that you get the notifications for all the new videos that we have coming up. We have a great lineup of uh, stuff coming out every single day. Um, don't want to miss that. Um, and then also, too, if you would add in the comments who your favorite player from the state of South Carolina is over the past 10 years. It's been a long line of them from Zion to Jod and Aaron Neesmith to P.J. Dozer to Darius Thornwell, Tevin Mack. The list goes on and on and on. Who is your specific favorite one? Want to hear, want to hear your thoughts in the comments. Um, and if you enjoy this interview, please be sure to share it across your platforms. Um, that would be great. We would love for you to, to do that. Uh, but without further ado, here is our conversation with the Sunrise Senior Christian Dylan Jones on the Absolute Basketball Experience with Jamie Shaw. Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Jamie Shaw here again at the Absolute Basketball Experience. Today, we are joined here by Sunrise Christian Senior Dylan Jones. Dylan, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm trying to figure out this whole quarantine thing. It's uh, it's it's boring and monotonous, and I just don't have the imagination to to to, to stay right. fun. <laughs> right. Got to find a way, though. Got to find a way. Absolutely. What? So, what are you doing to stay active during the quarantine? I live twice a week with my uh, strength training coach. Mm -hmm. um, he's he he has a thing for accelerated um, physical therapy, mm -hmm. so we're able to still get it in. And um, I've been doing little stuff on my own, just running, uh, even like taking it to the stream and working out on outside courts, you know. Tough. Eventually, like, um, you almost like get it, uh, what's the word? You get exposed to how much you like to grind, you know. And uh, so when you're going to do any, you're going to do it by any means necessary. So, no doubt. Yeah. Are, you, are you in Columbia now or are you out in Kansas still? I'm in Columbia. I got you. Good. Uh, who are you working out with in Columbia? So I work out with, you know, Coach Savage. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rod Rose. Yeah, oh, yeah. All, all the good ones. Right. And, and I do my strength coach training with um, Athlete Serena. It's, good. Right. Yeah, and Jason Brown. Gotcha. No, that's awesome. Yeah, I know Rob and Christian both that do a good job. Um, what video games are you playing now? I'm not a video game guy, actually. Yeah, I'm not either. I'm not either. I, I don't. I don't play video games. Yeah, that's good, man. See, I, I don't either. I never got into it. I know everybody's doing it, so. Yeah, a lot of school. So let's <laughs> let's go way back into it. Start off with your Keenan days. Y'all had an unbelievable run. Your three years there. You were 74 and 13, culminating with a 30 and one uh, junior season and a state championship. Keenan has known through the state of South Carolina for the basketball program. Where does your 30 and one team line up all time with the Keenan basketball teams? If I said, I'd say we're the best, <laughs> but like, um, it was a lot of good teams. Like, you know, I seen, I seen my brother then who went back to back. Mm -hmm. That was arguably a good team. And it was a lot of great teams before that with Buddy Harper, even Ryan Norris, Thurman Zimmerman. Um, I mean, but our record speak for itself. I don't know if anyone ever went 30 and one and, uh, did we did and we was able to win a championship but um it was it was it was good though I mean coach Norris said that we were the best team yeah. that I think so uh, <laughs> we, we 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 were good though I think if we was the ranking we'd be up there for sure no one can deny that but, and what um, was it what was it about that team you think with you and Raekwon and Asante and Jason and everybody what was it about that team that made it special honestly we clicked in the summer Mm -hmm. And it was just something like we like we kind of didn't really know we didn't even know you know we was just kids honestly yeah. we were just playing in in the summer uh, how we were gelling like we were beating everybody like we like we didn't lose a game and then um, I think that just carried over to the se the season and we noticed that we could really like like do some damage yeah. and of course Santi didn't come at first Asante went to combine and then he came back and we were ecstatic about that and we knew we were gonna open some eyes this year so it was it was good just because like well like when you go back in like when as we progress as players and when you go back and look at those teams you're gonna be like dang Keenan was loaded yeah. you know like it, it didn't look like that at the time but I, I know everyone on that team is, is going to do great things and it is currently right now especially with the season Raekwon just had mm -hmm. Santi Plant which just played at Georgia Tech in the ACC and me going to do what I got to do so yeah it was good 
Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely. Y'all seem to have a, an unselfish chemistry that really everybody was playing for each other. Yeah, for um, sure. With that team. Uh, okay. And then moving forward, I guess, to the AAU season, y'all had another just absolutely loaded team. Um, you know, you got guys going to Clemson and Butler. You got, you know, uh, Emory at Charleston Southern. And you got Isaiah going where he's going and Patrick going to South Carolina. The list goes on. Um, what is it about you just playing with incredible amounts of talent and not, not coming off the floor? Let's just say I provide something that is undeniable. Like, no matter – I like, me being as, as, as high as the IQ I have, mm -hmm. I'm able to know multiple positions. Yeah. So – it's kind of hard, and I'm every time I'm on the court, I'm solid. So it's kind of hard to take me off, honestly. Um, like if let's say Miles need a break, which he rarely does, I can play the point, or it's a, if we need to go small ball four, I can slide in at the four. And like it's just it's just so many things I can do. It's just kind of hard to take me off, and it's not like I'm out there like wilding or doing something I'm not supposed <laughs> to be. You know? I'm just I'm just playing the game. So um, it's kind of I just it's just a true testament to who I am. No, no doubt. Um, and, and then coming out, you had the tough decision. Obviously, you grew up playing with all these guys and everything. You had the tough decision to transfer out to Sunrise. What was it that went into that decision for you? So, I didn't talk to Sunrise till after um, the state championship. And, you know, me, I am just, just want to stay. I'm not thinking about transferring. And um, I just had to just think about, like, I guess my future. Mm -hmm. um, Sunrise was a was a was a future decision, not a right now. That was a basketball decision for where I see myself in the future. You know, it wasn't about I could have stayed at Keenan and and done great, I'm sure. But yeah. Sunrise was going to put me in a space where I was going to have to grow not only as a player but as a person. You know, um, at Keenan, I mean, we had won a state championship. I had accolades. I felt like I had done a lot honestly I played for a year you know I played as an eighth grader so I had done a lot for Keenan already so um the hardest part was honestly leaving like coach Norris you know like that was like coach like he took me in even like when my brother was playing I, I was a water boy you know like I was on the court and at state championship and stuff so that was the hardest part honestly but um I had to make a, a a business decision, honestly. Like, I had to grow. I knew that as a person. I, I knew that internally that I had to grow. So it, that's ultimately what it came down to. Absolutely. And then looking back on it from the day that you decided to go to Sunrise to this conversation right now, how would you say your game's improved? Uh, I'm able to shoot the ball better. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that just opened up a lot more things in my game. So, like, me as a player and everybody know I can pass and dribble. So if I'm able to even knock down the shot and the team got to run me off the line, then I'm able to drive closeouts and make plays for my teammates and stuff. It just opened up a lot for my game. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I play with a lot of great players at Sunrise. So um, they obviously were – like defensively, I got better. I lost weight. So I'm able to guard multiple positions. Like it was just – overall, I got better. But in the main areas, I could say shooting and my body, I, got, I was in shape. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I was about to say, uh, every time I look on like verbal commits or something, seeing somebody from Sunrise is getting some sort of Division One offer, committing right. and all that kind of stuff. What is the environment like out there? What is the environment and practice like and the competitive nature that, you know, if you know that you screw up on the court, you got a D1 player behind you that's ready to go. Right. So, so that was the thing. Like, I mean, everyone knows that I had a, like a, I had a bad attitude before I went to Sunrise. And um, it was basically like I grew because – I couldn't do that because if I did it, I wouldn't play, you know, like my coach is going to be like, like, I don't need you. Like he won't say that, but like, yeah. you don't need me, you know, like he got another top 40 player behind me, you know? So I had to grow up and recognize that and that helped everything. But as a team, it was so competitive every day. Like it was like, 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 I don't even know how to explain it. Like, we – everyone was trying to get better, and it was obvious. Like, in the moment, we probably didn't even know how competitive we were and how we were helping each other. But, I mean, that's just how it works. Like, we was – we ended up being number three in the country. Things like that happened because of that. So, um, like you're saying, like, uh, knowing that you got players behind you and stuff is definitely uh, – it's going to open your eyes and notice that you can't, you can't mess around. You got to just be about business. So, that was good. And how would you say that, you know, taking your senior year going out there, 
Um, obviously, you played on the Adidas gauntlet and stuff, so you, you're acclimated to traveling. But having an entire season, having to juggle schoolwork, having to juggle making the grade, having to juggle travel all over the country, how would you say that got you prepared and acclimated for a college uh, type of thing? Definitely. That's why that Sunrise is very underrated for doing that because mm -hmm. my school was – that was the hardest thing I've ever experienced probably. Like, you know, like a lot of people like to tab the prep school thing and think you don't really do nothing. But uh, sun, uh, uh, Sunrise will pair you with basketball, but it might prepare you even better academically. So um, no, learning how to, like, manage your time and stuff, that was definitely a part because, like, you're secluded from so much that's going on at home. You're able to, like, kind of lock in and, like, grow new habits basically. Sure. You're able to you able to like inherit new things and, and have good habits. And uh, that's basically uh, how it happened. So going through, I guess we mentioned verbal commits earlier, going through your verbal commits page here, uh, you have what, 15 to 20 offers or so. And it really seems like over these past maybe month, uh, your offer sheet has really kind of risen and all that kind of stuff. How would you say that the recruitment has gone both throughout the season and then kind of once the season's ended for you uh, by getting seen and all? So – Throughout the season, like, I didn't really have a lot going on, honestly. Like, mm -hmm. um, like, I, like, a lot of stuff I had early on had honestly fell off, which was fine. But it helped me as a player, like I said. Like, I had to grow. I had to basically reinvent myself and claim new – like, I had to be a new player. I had to – and basically, I was starting from ground – like, from the groundworks. I was starting from zero. Mm -hmm. And I, and I like that. So, as the season went on, we were planning events. and. It's crazy, like probably the top, the top two events is probably my two best games when we play Cancer Research and I play and we play Lala Mir and I have I win MVP and mm -hmm. um, when we play in Hoop Hall I have eight I go two for two from three you know like stuff I've never done before and um, that really at the time nothing was really shaking but I knew that I just had to stay true to myself like I just had to stay with it because I like I worked every day. So I just had to just stay true to my ground. I couldn't, like, lose focus, basically. Because, honestly, I didn't have a lot going on during the season. But after the season, I definitely reaped the benefit. So, And it seems like your recruitment kind of peaked when yeah. on the rise, right when the coronavirus and the quarantine came uh -huh. into play and stuff. How have you been able to navigate through the waters of developing relationships? I mean, you're, you're going to spend your next four years at this, whatever school you go to and all. How have you spent your time navigating through the relationships and understanding the programs and all that stuff without taking visits? It probably was a, it, my perspective was almost was a good thing because it kind of eliminates like the, the stuff that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, like every campus is like, if we're going to be honest, every campus is the same. Like you're going to go to school, you're going to do work. Like that's how I view it. Mm -hmm. So like, Let's say I go visit somewhere that's just blow, like blow, like off the charts, just yeah. crazy. You know, I'm I'm probably gonna commit, but it's probably not the best basketball decision. So no, no. me being able to take away what me being able to visit, I looked at it kind of as a blessing, honestly, because I was able to navigate through the real and the fake. I was able to filter it. I was able to, you know, see the see the real. I, I had to make my decision solely on basketball. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it on if I liked the campus or how big the gym is or where I'm sleeping at, you know, it was a solely basketball decision. Yeah. And that, that's a, you know, that's a blessing of a way to look at it, I guess. And ability to now. Um, so I, I guess most recently coming through Bryant, Weber state, Western Carolina, Grand Canyon, Missouri state, UIC. What, what are these coaches telling you for how they want you to play? What type of role do they want you to come into and how do they, how do they see you? You, you said it before, and we all know you have a very unique game. How did these guys see you fitting into what they're doing and what are they telling you? Basically, the more – like, kind of like the more positions I know, the better off I'll be. Because, like, I'm the type of player that you can't put me in a box. You know, you can't say I'm this position or whatever. It's just not going to work. So, me me knowing multiple positions is going to help me a lot. But also, me being a mismatch. Like, it's just where the mismatch is. I'm like a mismatch plug, basically. Yeah. You put me, we can play small ball four. And I can have a four close out on me, and you know that's not going to be a good idea. And I can have a play the point and have smaller guards guard me, and we could just go to the post. It's just it's just like a lot of things, like just me being a mismatch. It's just like you can use me in so many different ways. So that's what they've been expressing the most. And so. then in your research and stuff, what type of system do you feel like you would perform best in? 
uh, probably four out, one in. Mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of like how basketball has evolved right now, just a regular four out, one in. Um, obviously, you want to play in those so you can uh, attack. That's kind of what we played at Sunrise. But uh, so you can attack and, you know, uh, play play with pace, basically, play and flow. So probably four out, one in. I got you. So, and looking at it, I guess transitioning back over to some some general conversation, uh, the state of South Carolina um, uh -huh. has really picked up recently with the amount of basketball talent they're producing. Uh, sure. the last ten years or whatever, you know, you got the like obviously Ja Zion, you know, you got the likes of um, you know PJ Sandarius, you know yourself, Asante, um, all these uh -huh. guys are going high level basketball. Why do you think that is that? Uh, you know, all of a sudden now the talent's getting seen and it's uh, really getting to be a high level. Um, it's a saying that they used to say, Kurt said all the time, uh, the cream of the crop will always rise to the top. Like, mm -hmm. it's just how it, it just always happens. Like, when players go to these schools, like Zion or Ja, like, like it just levels out. Like, you're going to see the real. And uh, we know that South Carolina, like, especially, like, before then, was really nobody. Like, it was, like, maybe one here and there. But nobody was, like, really, like, it wasn't no, like, no pathway created. Yeah. So, like, when you look at Ja do what he do at uh, mid-major and Zion obviously just paved the way for a lot of people, it's, like, gives people hope, you yeah. know. And, 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 and so, like, we're good, but the younger kids probably going to be even better because mm -hmm. they see it. Like, when we were coming up, we seen it, but we didn't really see it. Yeah. Like, no one was really, like, going to the NBA when we were coming up. But, like, now, like, you got the little kids seeing Ja and Zion. They're going to see, like, it's a way, you know? Yeah. Like, when we – I don't – I don't even – the first player I remember going to the league when I, like, was in high school was probably, like, Sandarius and, like, PJ. And yeah. I'm pretty sure some more before that. I just can't remember. But those were the main ones, you know? And by then, I was in high school. Yeah, it was probably you know? what – Raymond Felton was probably the one before them. Maybe yeah, Ramon Simpsons, but he ain't really had it like that. Exactly. It was a while ago. So, like, we didn't really see nobody, like, pave the way. Mm. But, like, them guys seeing, like, people, like, really do it, it's going to be – they're going to be even scarier. In my yeah. So. yeah, no doubt. So, uh, coming back from Kansas, you uh -huh. landed in Columbia. Where's the first place you're going to grab a meal at? My mama house. And what's she cooking? Macaroni. <laughs> Can't beat it. Macaroni and some pork chop. That's that southern food. I got to stay off that. Oh, man. Hey, that's that good stuff, though, man. They, they don't know about that out in Sunrise. Yeah, no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they think they don't know nothing. <laughs> right. I think I was the – I might have been the only person from the South, actually. It's crazy. Yeah. But mm – -hmm. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, um, well, I appreciate you taking some time out to uh, get with us here on the Absolute Basketball Experience. You're uh, one of my favorite people. I'm excited to have covered you over these last few years and stuff, and even more excited to see your, you know, future going forward. I, you have the, you're the type of person who's going to be successful – on the basketball court, and even if you didn't play basketball, you'd be successful off the court as well. You just got that type of personality and magnetism. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Appreciate it, Jamie, for everything. Absolutely, man. And keep yeah. uh, keep me up to date with everything. We're gonna try to wherever you commit to and all that kind of stuff. Try to catch as many games as possible and all that. And uh, you know, good luck in the future. All right, yeah, appreciate it. Absolutely. For Dylan right. Jones, I'm Jamie Shaw on the Absolute Basketball Experience. Thank you guys very much. And there you have it. There is our talk with Dylan Jones of Sunrise Christian, originally from Columbia, South Carolina, on the Absolute Basketball Experience. Great talk. We were able to pull back the layers and really, uh, you know, get in with him, get to know him, and you can see how cerebral and how, how, how thought, um, thoughtful he is with, with what he says and what he does and, and how charismatic and all that kind of stuff he is, too. So we expect to have a, see a great career coming from him uh, whenever he chooses his, his school and wherever he's going and all that. Um, but if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to this channel. And if you enjoyed this interview, please share it across your platforms. We want everybody to hear all about Dylan and, and all the good stuff that he's doing and, and is going to continue to do uh, in the future. Again, in the comments, we want to hear who your favorite player from the state of South Carolina is over the past 10 years. Tons to choose from, tons of talent coming through. We want to hear what you think. With, uh, but thank you very much for tuning in. I am Jamie Shaw for Dylan Jones. This is the Absolute Basketball Experience. Thank you.